Well, hello, YouTube. Welcome to Captain Dave's Sport Fishing Channel. And I mentioned this in my community page, and I got overwhelming responses of, should I show you and do a simple show-and-tell review type thing on all the Walmart, basically, Ozark Trail items that I use on my boat damn near daily. And how, really, basically everything that you see right here in front of me doesn't add up to one single Yeti cooler. I'm not poo-pooing anything, but as I always say, that I cannot do MSRP. I can't have the most expensive things in, that you could buy, because I need to stay in business, and I need to watch every dollar. So, I'm sort of a bargain chopper when it comes to things on my boat that I use all the time. In the charter fishing business, I want a lot of things, and I want spares. I'm big into spares. I've got videos about having spare anchors, all kinds of spare stuff, because I'm constantly changing it up, and if I lose something or if something breaks, I, can, I should have a spare. I need a spare boat, as a matter of fact. What we're going to be talking about here is all the Ozark Trail stuff that I have and why I like it. Let's first start out with the item that practically sold out of every single Walmart store when they hit the market or hit the shelves out of your local Walmart. It was simply these insulated 20 ounce stainless steel Mugs, cups, containers, whatever you want to call them. Tumblers. These things are absolutely fantastic. I take them out with me every single day. Like right now. I still have coffee in this one. They work. To quote a friend of mine who when we were out fishing, he was kind, we were kind of joking around. And he says, golly. How the hell does this thing work? And I was like, what are you talking about? He says, I put coffee in here in the morning at 7 a.m. And at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, that coffee's still warm. And I said, through the magic of air insulation is what I believe it to be. So you got your standard cup, your standard mug or whatever you want to call it. Then you bought, you could buy the handle, the plastic handle, and it came with the O-ringed lid. Everybody's seen these, and if you don't have them, you're really missing out. Let me show you something here that I do and where mine sits every single day. Right here is my Robo cup holders that clamp onto my console. I have another one over there, right there. It's got some terry cloth towels in it at the moment. But this sits right there. And I've got these little strappy things that I got for free because I hang hooks on the inside of them. But there it sits. I believe I've got four of these in various colors and handle styles. And believe it or not, at one point that these handles have just completely sold out at Walmart. Because everything was so much cheaper than the name brands. So I've got like four of these that I cycle around through the dishwasher. The second item that never leaves this boat, it's always with me. Because... I like to stay extremely hydrated. I have purchased two 
of these one gallon insulated stainless steel jugs. You can hear it. This one's even got ice in it. I was kind of skeptical. I think these were like nine bucks, maybe three bucks for the handle. Okay, that beats $35, $40 any day of the week with other brands. This one gallon jug, I bought one, and then I realized when it's 110 degrees in the shade in the middle of the summer, I can drink just this one alone by myself. And I always like to have plenty of water on the boat. I find this jug extremely well made and thought out. It's the same thing. It's the insulated stainless steel. I believe it's $30 at Walmart. And it has this lid. And you unscrew it. And you got your pour spout. And it kind of rotates. I was very hesitant thinking, okay, this is really going to snap off and everything really fast. It hasn't. Goes down, has a good seal. Very good, strong handle with this uh, rubber gripper on it here. And at the same time, when you take this lid off, again, I thought it was going to be extremely difficult to take this handle or this, this lid off. And I thought, okay, all this is just going to break. It doesn't. There's a rubber gasket up inside here. It's got a wide mouth. This stays on my boat every day with me. I take at least one. This really works out. For $30, you can't beat this with an ugly stick compared to what others are asking for these. I used to be a big insulated plastic water jug kind of guy. These far exceed that in every way. Many times when, when space is at a premium because I have the four passengers just loading my cooler full of so much stuff in the summertime, I take this and I stick it under my leaning post here and it literally just sits out and the uh, water stays cool really like all day long and I'm constantly pulling it out and filling up one of these and what I do is I usually fill it up about three quarters of the way with water and then I fill it up with ice cubes and I leave it in my refrigerator at home and in the morning I take it go out fishing all day and I come back and the ice cubes are still in here. So I highly recommend that if you're somebody like me and you need to and want to stay extremely hydrated, this one gallon jug for 30 bucks, I believe, at Walmart, Ozark Trail, is so worth it. I picked up two, and still, everything right here does not add up to sometimes what one high expensive Yeti cooler might, might cost. Let's move on to the next thing. Alright, the next item. I have, I believe, two videos all about using a soft-sided cooler for a fish bag. And you'd say maybe, well, why do you want, you know, i got a cooler on my boat. I've got a, uh, I've got a, a fish box on my boat and all that. Well, I started out with trying to keep as much weight and bulk out of my boat a couple years ago. And I tried some Yeti hoppers. I believe it was the Yeti hopper 40, maybe the 30s. Well, I kind of changed things up and being the guy that I am, I'm a horse trader and I'm always swapping things out, selling things and buying things and it's just the way I am. And I used my Yeti hoppers and I really liked them for fish bags, believe it or not. Then I kind of changed things up and then I saw at Wally's World for I believe it was 68 
99 or something. This insulated fish bag. Well, for me, it's a fish bag. But it's a soft-sided cooler. It's an Ozark Trail. The whole thing for me about using this to put fish in is it's easy to clean. I don't have to clean out a cooler. I don't have to dump a cooler over. At the end of the day, it's very simple. I put fish in here. I got ice in here first thing in the morning. I pre-chill this off. I've got ice in here. I put fish in here. And at the end of the day, I stick them on the back of the boat. I pull them out, clean them, and I'm done. I take this over to the side of the boat and I dump out the ice. And when I get home, I give it a little spritz out with some fresh water, dump it out. That's it. It's light. It's not taking up any room. And let me show you what I used to do, and I kind of found it to be a pain. All right, well, this is right behind my leaning post, and I have a wonderful Icy Tech, as you can see, an Icy Tech 120D. That means it's divided. Over here is my shrimp well, as you may have seen in other videos. There's an aquaculture ceramic stone with a hose, with the hose going to under here. I run my shrimp on pure oxygen with a regulator, right? And this works out fantastic. And to keep the lid open, I put one of these springs in here, right? So this not only provides a place for me to have people sit, especially little kids. I put them right here. They're good and safe. But it opens right up, and that's more than enough to have all my shrimp. Well, then I thought in the beginning that this space right here would be perfect. Fill this full of ice and have shrimp on one side, fish box on the other. Well, that works out really good in the summer or warmer months because this ice is cooling this water and my shrimp during 90 and 100 degree temperatures stay alive like no tomorrow. I mean, this is the ticket system, folks. But later on in the year, I found it sort of a pain day in, day out, Filling this full of ice, it gets all grimy. Fish are flopping around here, throwing blood everywhere. And then what did I have to do? Well, I had to detach my oxygen. I've got this down here with some turnbuckles right here onto my leaning post. So it pretty much stays in place. I'd have to undo this, flip the cooler over, spray it out, uh, you know, take a... A brush I got this brush right here take this brush I'd have to clean it all up and get it ready for the next day well time is money so now I kind of use this as a storage right and many times if I got other bait other bait and of course here's my rubber famous rubber buckets and see how this cooler seems to hold just a little bit of water down in there for the sheer fact that the drain plug is not necessarily on the dead bottom. That's the only criticism I have of an Icy Tech cooler. But I'll put some ice just in one of the buckets and I'll put bait on top of it. You know, if I got, uh, you know, some cut bait, I'll just put it there. Right? So... It was a cleaning issue. It was a cleaning issue. It was time. That's more time after Charter Day that I have to spend. So, with that said, I went back to using a fish bag type system to put our fish in. Now, the pros and cons of this particular bag. This one cost a little bit more at Walmart for the sheer fact that this one is I guess you could say it's non it doesn't leak okay 
They've got dark gray ones. This one's light gray. They got dark gray ones that really aren't sealed inside. So this one has the blue liner and it's all sealed inside. It's just a better bag for a fish bag because it's not leaking. It's got the tough bottom on it. Okay, tough material. It's got a really decent uh, waterproof zipper. And I recommend that you keep the lube on here. I uh, keep it right here in the boat. Some zipper lubricant, right? You can also use Vaseline and things like that, okay, to keep your zipper really good and working. The only downside is that this bag is a little weird. It has these latches on the side here. So it snaps in and it folds it down compact on each side. There you go. This is meant, you know, for other things besides what I'm using it for. It's for taking, you know, a bunch of juice boxes with the kids to the beach or to the lake or whatever. And Yeti, even, on their hoppers, they changed a lot of their system to make it easier to get in. But really, do I want to pay that $69 or something versus $269, $369, $469, right? So this is kind of goofy. And what I do is I unsnap them and I just leave them open. Now, putting fish in here, first thing that you don't do is you don't catch a spiny old sheep's head with those weapons on his dorsal fin and just throw them in here and puncture it. Okay, what I do is I take a little knife like this, right, really, I don't know, just a sticker, kind of real pointy knife, and I will dispatch my fish. All right, if we caught a sheep's head or something that's got some spines on it, I'm going to take and put them in my bucket, and I'm going to bam, right between the eyes, right? Okay. I'm going to need to get rid of any twitching around. Okay, so I keep something like this handy. They do a lot of that in New Zealand. They absolutely claim that, you know, dispatching a fish and even bleeding them and all this stuff is going to make the meat better. And it's a possibility. I just don't have time to be messing around that much. So I just do that and I keep that knife right on my console. So you're not going to stick super sticky, spiny fish in here, of course. I leave these loose. And it's a little goofy because when you do open it up, it's not necessarily a one-hand operation here. you got to go like this and dump the fish in. Okay, throw them in there. The only thing, you, other thing you want to watch out for when you're using something like this is when you're trailering down the road. I have solved that problem because this is light and you don't want to f find it flying out of your boat. So being that this isn't a heavy cooler, this could fly out. And I'll show you what I do to make that not happen. Falls right in there. And underneath the leaning post now, either zipped closed or open, I got this bar and I snap it. And now it's never going anywhere. And it's a nice thing to do too, is being that I have this open space here, is I can fill this full of ice if I'm using it or not using it and have extra ice storage. In the summer, that's pretty important many times, and I'm going to need a lot more ice. So just having ice storage tucked up under here really seems to work out. I'm a real stickler for finding storage systems and keeping things open with as much fishing space as I possibly can. I cannot stand getting on a boat and everything is just covered up with stuff sitting on the deck. I'm all about fishing space. That's the reason I had my boat built the way it is because I wanted ballroom dancing fishing space. You know, it boils down to the same thing. You know, when you go <laughs> interior designers or something, 
okay, in a house or in an office, they're going to always be talking about situations of maximizing your space. So that's what I always try to do. And things like this sort of help me do that. Pros and cons. Not one single con. These uh, coffee, water, beer, whatever, there is not one single con that I can find. The only con with this is that you have this inner wire in here. There's an inner wire built in. So that is what this is made for. You lift these up, everything's a two-hand sort of operation here. Yeah. You can kind of open it up and then grab it and throw a fish in. All right. Now, all I do is spray this out. I don't put any chemicals in here. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not really doing much else with this as far as uh, food and drink or anything like that. But it is a two-handed operation, and if I mean, if you feel it up in here, there's like a there's a wire or something up in here. And that's what gives it this mouth, open mouth, shut type deal. But it is very insulated. I mean, you know, they, they do these things about coolers, and I just never understood it. You know, when they're talking about coolers, they're taking them to the max. Is it a 10-day cooler? Is it a 7-day cooler? Is it still have ice after 15 days? Well, I'm a one-day kind of guy, maybe a two-day guy, maybe a three-day guy, maybe a long-extended weekend kind of guy. I'm not out in the middle of the desert where I can't get more ice. I want ice containing. I don't really care about really, is it going to last a day or two? Of course it's going to last a day or two. So I might fill this up with, you know, uh, I don't know, one of my rubber buckets, you know, three gallons of ice, chipped ice. And then as I throw in fish, I might put some more on top of them. And what I found is adding a little water to your ice, making a slurry. You know, if I just have ice sitting in here and I throw a, a trout or a redfish or anything in here, right, he's just laying on top of the ice. That's not what you want on all fish boxes and and even coolers you want your fish to be surrounded by massive cold right water and ice that's the ticket i've gone as far in the middle of the summer to literally carry a little little bag of like rock salt okay so when i put ice in a in a bag or in a cooler i'll add some salt water and I'll grab a, uh, a little handful of rock salt even and throw it in there. And really salt it up and make myself a slurry brine. Okay. And I mean, it always makes your fish easier to clean and everything when they're super cold and preserved. So that's one of the things I do. The zipper. Now I've had these ba this bag for quite a long time now. I'd say months. And as long as you keep it lubed, I don't believe you're going to have any problems. There's always somebody out there that's going to abuse something terribly, okay? And they're going to say, oh, well, that don't work, or mine, mine, you know, shit the bed on me, and blah, blah, blah. Well, I'm not talking abuse or anything like that. I'm just talking about daily use and, main, and maintaining it. The insulation in here, I know what it is. It's, it's the same thing that everybody's using. It's like this real thick, uh, kind of hardish foam is all it is. But this is the same material that all the high dollar coolers, the only thing I can see is if it's sitting out in the sun a lot. I don't know how much UV protection is in this material. And because of these creases, you could get some cracking and splitting along. But mine's not necessarily sitting out in the sun day in, day out. The stitching all looks really good. The, the thermo sealing of it is very good. Uh, I haven't really even, it's got a little pocket here. I haven't even, I don't even use that for anything. 
But as far as a fish bag, if you're fish, I can't keep a redfish. I can't keep a redfish longer than this bag. I mean, 18 to 27 inches. So, you know, it all works out. It works out for me. And the storage underneath there works out perfectly. Now let me show you the next thing that I picked up that I really like. Let's go over it. Four of these cups, two of these jugs, four times, let's say four times nine, and the handles, uh, you know, okay, let's say $40 or $45 with the cups, uh, $60 with these, okay. Now we haven't even come close to two Yeti cups, three Yeti cups, or one of these Yetis. And, and these, what are these, a hundred and something dollars or ninety-nine dollars or something for Yeti? Okay. You know, the old thing it is work smart, not hard. Buy smart, not hard, right? So, okay, so that's that. Let me show you the next thing that I picked up just because I wanted to have one. All right, well, you know, Walmart does stay up sort of on me latest and greatest, and I guess you could call them the king of the knockoffs, really, all right? I mean, they're, when it comes to all these items that I've shown you, yeah, they're doing the knockoff thing. Many of these things, is, many of these are all built, they're all made in the exact same factory over Shazan, China, or whatever, okay? But I'm, <laughs> I'm into saving money, I have to say it. I mean, I can't afford to be going out and buying the super-duper expensive stuff all the time. Yeah, I splurge. But I did see that there was a little thing going on when it came to coolers. And there was this new cooler that came out called the Kula Cooler. K-U-L-A Cooler. And, of course, theirs wasn't bear-proof. Theirs was alligator-proof. All right, and they had a spiffy video on YouTube and everything with some entertaining, you know, footage and stuff. Well, Walmart picked up on that. And the Kula cooler was an insulated round cooler. And it could be used as a C. I saw it immediately and said, hey, that thing looks like a live well to me. Well... Walmart and Ozark Trail came out with their own version. And here it is. It's the exact same type version as what was being sold by somebody else for 200 and something dollars. This is a five gallon water dispenser. You've got a nice little spigot right here. I don't even use it for that. But the thing about it is, I could. I've stood on this. I've used this as a ladder. This thing is tough. It's insulated. And it is a five gallon. And I believe you could buy this probably as cheap or around the same price as a Yeti bucket. Five gallon bucket. If you got the lid and you got the this and you got the that and all that. I can't believe that they're selling five gallon buckets. So I got me a five gallon bucket here. And I think this was the same price as the soft cooler. It was about 68, 69 bucks. But what I liked about it, it's a seat and it's a live well. Pull that rubber handle down, pull it up. You've got a lid with a gasket. It's super tough. You've got a nice lip around it. You got, if you haven't seen these at Walmart, I guess you live where there's no Walmart. Good handles, I mean really, really good nylon handles that are removable. You go in here and it's got kind of a really good device here, little stainless steel squares that you just tilt them up and you push it through the little hole right in there and the handle comes right off. Easily removable handles. 
When Walmart came out with these, I said to myself, there is a home run. That is, this is a home run. And they lock right in. So, yeah, it's only five gallons, but it can be a five-gallon water container. It can be a five-gallon bucket. It can be a five-gallon seat. Fantastic. And it's a five-gallon live well. Ha-ha. Right up in here, there was a, I took it out. There is a little rubber stopper that goes right in that hole right there and that is to vent this so if the water isn't sort of coming out you just grab the little rubber uh, plug up here and you kind of squish it to the side to let some air in here that goes to show you how tight this is sealing all right <coughs> you've got these recessed areas here where you can put in more hooks and things like that to hold it. It's not that heavy. It's extremely well built. You've got the rubber pads in the bottom, right? Of course, it's made in China. But what a wonderful knockoff of the Kula cooler. Here's the thing that makes it a fantastic live well, folks. You've got all these places to go in and hang something. You could take these straps off. You could hang things on here if you get a little bit of ingenuity going. And through this hole, you take the little rubber plug out, which comes out real easy. And now you have a place for, like me, I have my oxygen tank and my aeration ceramic stone and I can run my tube through here, my airline through here and when I open this up my airline goes in and there you go. I got aeration for another shrimp live well. Not only do I have the one there, I have versatility where if I wanted to, I can get rid of this entire cooler back here that I showed you before. I can get rid of that, and I can just sit this. It takes up zero room. Zero room. Then in the summer, when it is ultimately hot, or I'm out doing a project or anything, I can clean this up and turn this into a water jug. A five-gallon water jug that I could have in my truck, I could have at a, at a work site, I could have on the boat. For customers even. Alright? So, it really is really a nice, nice item. And then, oh, well, they even thought of more. How about you're having a little party at the old uh, Ranchero Deluxe Fish Can. You, and you just want to be able to have some ice in here with some beers floating in it or something. they got this little tab right here on the hinge pin. And you can... Pull it out, pull out that hinge pin, and now you've got a little miniature of what Yeti calls their party tub, which is some hundred dollar item. It's much bigger than this, but now you've got a place for a party tub, or you could clean this out and just have ice in here and a scoop and people could add ice to their drinks. I just love this thing. I love it. Will I be using it just like every single day? Probably not, but it gives me the versatility to do so. And then what do you got there? You got another place to put, I don't know, a hold down or whatever. So the lid goes on very easy. Pull the pin, slide it back in, pull the pin back out, shove it in there, and you can see how it fits in there with just a finger hole. So, if you've got a small boat, and let's say, you know, you're wanting to keep shrimp, or if you're a freshwater guy and you're wanting to keep, I don't know, what do you all use? Little minnows or whatever? 
You cannot beat buying an oxygen tank like mine, and I'll show it to you here in a second. Get yourself a quality ceramic stone and a regulator, and you could have your oxygen bottle sitting in a compartment, or like me, I strap it with zip ties to a, a structure in my boat, and you can run a hose in here and have yourself an insulated live well. Because you got to remember, when the oxygen comes out of one of those oxygen bottles, those welding bottles, uh, it's like the oxygen in there is coming out at like 55 degrees. So when you have something insulated and you put water in it, and you have your bait in here, and then you're adding the oxygen, and you're cooling that water off, you could keep minnows and shrimp for days in something like this. If you're a live bait guy, oxygen, pure oxygen, and an insulated container is the greatest. And on a small boat, I'm always thinking about getting a small boat. And what would I have? I already have a seat, I'd already have a live well for my shrimp. If I have my oxygen bottle with me and my ceramic air stone. So I've got so many spare things that I can outfit another small inshore boat in one day. Let me show you my oxygen system. If you haven't ever seen any of my other videos where I go over my entire oxygen system that I keep my mullet, pogies and shrimp so let me show it to you well here's my oxygen oxygen and I got a regulator and I stress that you get a regulator that goes down to like 1 32nd or 1 16th okay of CFM I believe it is or something like that I don't know exactly what it is but there it is it's off and then I usually keep it at like 132nd alright I made a little dish for it just to sit in here down here and I just use zip ties and it just sits there and that bottle right there will last me months and months and to, to buy the bottle it's about 80 bucks at, at a welding supply uh, your, you know, your area, your state, your everything might vary. You can get these on Amazon. You can also get it from a company called Keep Alive. Keep Alive sells them. The major thing is you want to make sure that you can dial it down to almost nothing. All right, because the pressure coming out of here, you don't need to over oxygenate your your shrimp or your little minnows or whatever you're using. And then I got the hose. And then as I showed you before, the hose goes into here. Let me get this. And that is my, uh, what is it called? 0.4. That is a super, super duper aeration ceramic stone got the end it's all potted in there I mean it's it's this is a $50 stone you don't have to use these but I do recommend always using ceramic always use ceramic I could take this entire system that you see here and I can stick it right in through this hole and I can have my oxygen bottle. I've got, believe it or not, an aluminum small oxygen bottle that I could use if I ever wanted to go into a small boat. And then when I open up the lid, the oxygen can go right in here, the tube, and I can have my shrimp swimming around in here. You could have your little minnows, if you're a freshwater guy, using small minnows for crappy fishing or whatever. So, So what it turns out is all the Ozark Trail items can save you big time money 
and I really, really find them useful. So there you go. There's my little review on various uh, Ozark Trail items. And fish bag. Fish bag, live well, water storage, coffee cup. There you go, folks. I don't see a whole lot of downsides in any of these products. Now this, yeah, they're a little kind of a pain, but guess what? It's not nothing that would keep me from ever buying another one. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed just a little bit of what I do with some Ozark Trail Walmart products daily on my boat to help me be more efficient and more comfortable while we're out fishing aboard the Jetty Wolf with Captain Dave Sport Fishing Charters, Jacksonville, Florida. Give it a thumbs up and don't forget, hit the like button and get the notifications. Hit that bell. Hit that bell. Because you can subscribe all you want. But if you don't click that bell, you're never gonna be notified of future uploads. And I have got a channel. Please visit my channel because people refer to things in the comments all the time. And you know what? I probably have 10 videos about that same subject. So it's too bad people look at your videos, but they never explore into your channel, right? So I'm up to, I don't know, 670 videos or so. And there's probably a topic that I've discussed that meets your question. All right, so there you go. Ask away, ask any questions about what you saw here today. But this was pretty much concentrating on all of my Ozark trail items that I use every single fishing trip. So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.